Hello everyone, this is Victor Momo from Excel Moments and this is a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. Right now, you need to follow it to boost your Excel Power Query game, your Python game, your VBA game, your Excel All game. This is challenge 300. And what do we have in this one? It says fill in the 10 by 8 grid with numbers sequentially skipping X. So we have this grid where you have some blanks, you have X's at different points, and you want to fill in sequentially. 1, 2, 3, 4. This should have been 5, but because there's an X, you skip that, you go to 5, 6, 7, 8. This should be 9, but you skip it, you skip this, this becomes 9, and so on. The first thing that came to my mind was really that if I'm here and I can figure out how many blanks I have behind me, you know, two blanks behind me, then obviously this should be number three because if the blanks are having numbers, it's like saying this is the third blank, this is the fourth blank. So basically if I'm here and I can figure how many blanks are behind me, you know, then I add one to that and I figure this out. That's easy if I were dealing with like a one-dimensional array, like a vertical, you know, or horizontal column or row vector. But because this is a 2D array, it gets a little tricky. So in my mind, I was thinking I could do like a to-call, you know, so do a to-call and meaning that I want to take this into one column, basically, okay? So, you know, it kind of creates something that looks like this for me. Then I can figure out at every point how many blanks do I have above. I will fill in the numbers, you know, based on the count plus one. And once I get this answer, I basically can just use a wrap rows or wrap call, you know, to bring it back into a two-dimensional array since I know it's 10 by 8, pretty much. And, of course, this is going to work. But in my head, it felt like, okay, wow, this is long. The other way I was thinking about it was, yes, I can see sequential. One, two, three, four, five. Once I start to see anything that looks like an accumulation, a running total, there are two functions that come to my mind. You know, a reduced function and a scan function, depending on what is requested for. If I'm requested for, like, the final, final, you know, result, like the grand total, grand total, you know, like what a sum will give you, then that's like a reduce. But if I'm interested in getting the individual, you know, values at every step the totals at every step then i think of a scan which this sounds more like you know at every step it's like doing a one one plus one two plus one three plus one four and so on let me show you an example if i had numbers like this two let's say five nine eleven thirteen okay let's just what's the running total here simple mass two this is seven this is 16 this is 27 and you know this is 40. so i could replicate this with the scan function explain the scan in some detail in some of my videos i guess i will link them here so you can watch that right so that now i may not be able to do as much justice to it as i did in those ones but basically the initial value is going to be zero because you know you are doing like an aggregation if you have an initial value that is more than zero then your total will obviously be impacted okay now your array is this you are looping through this now your um, your function is basically a lambda. I was almost going ahead of myself there. And you need two variables there, an accumulator and an iterator. What do you do with those two? And what do they mean? The first thing you need to know is that the accumulator starts up with this initial value, meaning the accumulator will start with zero. The iterator, you know, loops through or iterates through the array, meaning that the iterator will have the first value of the array in its first step, which is two. Okay? So now the accumulator and iterator. Accumulator is zero. Iterator is two. You add that together. 0 plus 2, that gives you 2. That will become the new value of the accumulator. So the accumulator always picks up, you know, the result of the first step. So the result of the first step becomes the accumulator for the next step. So it means the accumulator now has a value of 2 entering into the second iteration. And then the iterator now has used the number 2, so the iterator will use the number 5. When you add that 5 and 2 together, you have 7. You know, 7 is the new accumulator. Now you're coming into the third step. Accumulator has seven. Iterator has used two and five. Iterator would need nine. Nine plus seven, 16, and so on. That's kind of how it goes. So let me just finish this up anyway. <laughs> so you see, you kind of see what I'm getting at. Okay. Right. So basically, you can see that the scan function reproduces that. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I think this is something. But it feels like it's going to be tricky because of the X's. But well, let's use the scan and see what we get first of all. So I'll start with the scan, and this is me just trying to walk you through, you know, my thought process. My initial value, I take this as zero, and then I say, I look through, you know, this is everything. This is going to be my array, the entire thing. Then I pull up lambda. Accumulator, I trade, so I can use A and B, all right? Okay, so now in my head, I'm like, okay, this thing is going to start up with zero, you know, so the first value I need there is like zero plus one. 
you know so that's like a plus one then the next one of course is one plus one two one plus um, two plus one three and so on so i'm like i can just do an a plus one here you know i don't even need the b the b will just help me to know how many times this will repeat okay so since b would be a two two you know um j9 which is probably like 80 i think it's a 10 by 8 80 so this will happen 80 times and this thing will keep doing a plus one and so on so i'm like let me do a plus one so let's see where this lands me okay so now you can see that i have one to 80. now this is not correct right because what's happening is that i'm feeling everything you know i'm not able to say oh this is x i'm not supposed to increment because that's what happens everywhere there's an x it doesn't increment so it's like four this doesn't increment it then increments after so i need to find a way inside of my construct you know to be able to say okay when it is blank increment when it's not blank don't increment so i can come in here in this calculation where he's doing a plus one i can put an if there and say if don't forget that b is the iterator b is iterating through this whole thing right so b will start with this blank this one this one and so on like that so i can just test with b and say if b is blank that's when i really need it to you know, add one to it because when it sees the next blank, you should add one to it. But when it's not blank, you know, you should pretty much just leave A as is. So, what this means is that when if I were on the value three and it sees a blank, it will increment to four. If it stops and sees an X, it will not increment it, it will just keep four that way. So, that number will be repeated. But, you know, let's see how that looks like. Okay. So, you can see that, yeah, at least now, even though we don't have the X's, but the numbers are doing what they should do. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. Because of that X, 4 repeats itself. So 5 is now here, you know, and then that keeps going. Anywhere there's an X, like here now, there's an X here. This should have been, you know, 9, but 8 will repeat itself. So at least we have the mass correct, and the last number here is 48, okay? So let's just do a comparison here between our own grid and what XLB has given us as a result. Just to be sure we have... You know, maybe all truths there okay and just for completeness i could just put a sum here <laughs> maybe just do something like this just to see that i have you know, the right thing there okay so once i get 80 correctly then it means that i'm fine okay so now that i have this you know pretty much i can finish it up because this is the same thing the only thing that needs to happen here is that i would just say look at this grid here everywhere it is blank correct give me the numbers everywhere it's not blank put an x there once i do that you know i'll be fine now you need to notice some other thing here that you can do some other person may solve this in a different way you know here where i did this if a plus one there are many ways to doing this okay because basically you know i'm just trying to do you know like yes an a plus one but the only thing i want to do is that i want the plus one to only happen when it is blank when it's not blank i don't want the plus one so you could also have said here and said when b equals to blank you know when b equals to blank what's that going to give you that's going to give you a true which when you add it is pretty much one when b is not blank meaning that b is x for example that would be false which would be a zero so basically with this construct you are also getting your one and zero instead of also using the if that i used it's the same thing really you're just about okay i want to get a plus one when it is blank and when it's not blank i want it to just be e you know you do the same thing okay and you know you get this so once you've done this basically that's your result what you now do is this you can come here and say if this you know this is your grid here if this is what blank anytime is blank you want to perform this scan pretty much is what it is but if it is not blank you want to put an x there okay that's what it is so when it's blank it will pick the numbers here when it's not blank it will pick the x you can read it some other way. I like it this way, right? Okay. And once you do that, you see that this works. And then I also have, you know, 80. And that's pretty much, you know, what we are trying to get. You could also have decided, you know, to change it up a little. Let me show you something. Okay. Let me just duplicate this so that, you know, I kind of keep this one. So let me come back here and then let's start this kind of game, right? I can start with zero. Now, for my array, I can, you know, just introduce like a true or false, which is I can select this grid and say, test if it's equals to, you know, blank. Pretty much what will happen is that for these ones that are blank, they will be true. The ones that are X's, you know, would be false. So I have true and false, which 
translate to one and zero, which will now be useful, you know, in the calculation part there where I was doing plus one. So now, once I do this, I already have like a true and false. Then I can go into, you know, the lambda portion. So I can now say A, B, right? Okay, and now I can now say A plus B. Why would I do plus B here? Because B is, you know, these values you have in here. And these values here, what would they be? You can see them here. True, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, so wherever is blank, you know, B is going to have a value of 1. You know, wherever it's not blank, which is, it has an X technically, then it's going to have a value of 0. And, you know, this is pretty much what you need. Okay, close those two. Okay, now you can see that you have a grid that is correct. Once that's correct, you repeat the same part, which is just an if, you know, select this, you know, this portion and say if it's blank, you know, do the scan. And then if not, you know, you can do, yeah. Or somebody else will say, oh, if not, you can repeat the same grid. That's the same thing, A1, you know, or A2 to J9. But I just prefer to put the X in there. In this case okay close bracket and then you know you have the same thing you can decide to introduce a let if you feel that you are using a2 to j9 a couple of times like if you are going to use it here too and you're using it three times you can then use a let as a let you know p b a2 to j9 and then you know you can kind of make the formula look a little more elegant but you know it's not the most difficult when you kind of figure out what it is you're supposed to do but when you look at it first of all you're like oh, you know how do i go about this yeah, but the secret lies in the scan function, knowing that the scan function can help you to do like what you may call a running total. And then you just use an if to discriminate between when it's blank and when it has an X pretty much. And, you know, you're done. I really hope that, you know, you enjoyed this video. And I always appreciate those who have subscribed to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Turn on the notification bell icon so that when I post a video, you'll be the first to know. Thank you for your time. I'm out.